Palau Varangai. I come from the School of Agriculture from the University of Lisbon. I first would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to be here and the opportunity to share with you the results from the discussions that we had uh, in the scope of the focus group on soil contamination. In fact, it is very important to acknowledge uh, that agricultural soils can be contaminated and that this can have an impact on food security and safety and on human health. Despite the lack of harmonized data about the contamination of agricultural soils in Europe, there are already some studies to support our concerns. Let me just shorten here my image. Okay. Uh, for instance, in a study about pesticide residues in European soils, uh, they found that 80% of the soils contained one or more residues and that about 58% of the soils contain mixtures of residues. In another study about metals and metalloids, uh, they found that there is a high percentage of samples with concentrations above the threshold value in Lucas samples from agricultural soils and that altogether more than uh, one, uh, uh, 137,000 kilometers square, about 6.24% uh, uh, of all agricultural soils in Europe need remediation. So in fact, the question that uh, was put to all of us from the focus group was how to prevent agricultural soil contamination and how to address the problem of contaminated soils. The group was composed by 16 experts from different uh, EU countries, about uh, 12 EU countries, uh, coming from different professional backgrounds. We had, invest had investigate investigators, farmers, uh, NGOs, representatives, uh, people from the industry, uh, advisors, and all the members actively participated in, in meetings in Italy and in, in Portugal. Um, and our discussions and our methodologies were uh, um, together the knowledge were to with questionnaires, group discussions, we vi visit, uh, uh, visited farmers, we had some meeting, meeting with operational groups um, uh, uh, related to soil health. And from our discussions, we uh, found that we consider very important uh, to uh, know um, uh, deeply the different contamination sources, the old ones and the emerging ones, those that deliver organic and inorganic contaminants. Some of these um, uh, contamination sources are external to the agricultural activity but some of them are internal to the agriculture activity, Name, namely mineral fertilizers application, plant protection, protection products application, the use of animal manure, slurry, or sewage sludge contaminated, or for instance, compost and biochar, also with a high load of contaminants. Um, uh, 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 irrigation water, which is of low quality, plastic use, all these uh, activities, they are agricultural activities, but they can deliver to the agroecosystem different uh, contaminants, heavy metals, metalloids, personal care products, pesticides, uh, nutrients, pharmaceuticals, plastic debris, organic contaminants. And it is very important uh, that to understand the, these uh, contamination sources, these internal contamination sources, because uh, they can be the ones that the farmer can um, can control and by their mean uh, prevent soil contamination. It is also very important that farmers try to achieve good yields and for profitability through good farming practices that enhance soil quality and avoid its contamination. Uh, and which good farming practices? Well, crop rotations, cover crops, the use of integrated soil fertility management, uh, precision agriculture, and so on. And all these uh, practices can uh, lead to the to reduction in the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides, which can cause 
contamination of soil and water when applied in excess. When needed, contaminated soils should be remediated and uh, uh, preferably using gentle remediation options. For instance, by remediation, using organic uh, amendments like compost, bio char to help to immobilize contaminants and enhance microbial activity to break down certain organic pollutants, even using uh, plants in uh, phytoremediation technologies that can uh, help to immobilize trace elements or to ex extract the trace elements from soil or to degrade um, organic contaminants. There are uh, already some good examples of these practices, namely using um, energy crops in arable soils contaminated with trace elements or in marginal soils. And Biscantos, for instance, is evidenced as a good uh, crop uh, for uh, biomass production, and it can be used in marginal soils and in contaminated soils. There are also good examples uh, from the remediation projects that um, were held in uh, uh, south of Spain because of uh, a mining spill that affected agricultural soils. They have used Brassica juncea and uh, also some native shrubs amendments with compost, cow manure and lime. And they have actively uh, been able to remediate those soils. Of course, there are some knowledge gaps that should be addressed, addressed namely the links between soil lab data and their applicability at farm level, the uptake of contaminants by crops and their entrance into the human food chain, consequences for human health. It is also very important, um, and there are already some, uh, some gaps uh, to identify alternative crops to be uh, uh, cultivated in contaminated soils. And uh, it is very important to establish long-term experimental size to deliver robust scientific data from soil remediation uh, projects. Project. It is also very important to have uh, knowledge about the fate of emerging contaminants, such as pharmaceuticals, veterinary and personal care products, and to define threshold values for this type of uh, chemicals in soil. So it is also very important to know more things about plastic, the behavior of plastic in agricultural soils, and very important to standardize and to validate precision agriculture technologies to be used uh, in the field. The, uh, some innovative ideas to address uh, these knowledge gaps or for instance, to establish common soil sampling procedures to be used uh, and to help uh, to, to have answers to the farmer's needs. Uh, the evaluation of bioavailable and soluble fraction of contaminants in agricultural soils to protect crops and water. Define alternative crops for low quality agriculture and marginal uh, uh, soils. Select non-food crops for soil remediation adapted to different European climate regions. Implement sustainable farming systems to apply the right amount of fertilizers based on ecophysiological needs of, of the plant. Adopt uh, buffer strip zones near uh, surface waters to act as contaminant sinks and increase the use of precision agri agriculture technologies. And um, uh, especially important to adapt those technologies also to small scale farmers. So concluding, healthy soils are a paramount uh, importance to the future of uh, agriculture, to maintain ecosystem functions and services, and to sustain plant communities. Prevention uh, should lead farmers to protect their soils from contamination, and uh, prevention is far more important than remediation, of course. This could be done through the implementation of sustainable farm management practices, and the application of 
soil-friendly technologies. We invite you to um, consult some of the mini papers and the final re report that we, we have prepared under the scope of the Scopus Group on soil contamination. Thank you all for your kind attention to this presentation. I'll leave you with the, the, the link to the site. Thank you all. I hope to meet you again here for the discussions. Thank you very much. <laughs>